I would also like to thank, I mean, I would also like to congratulate you for making the shortlist for the Nigeria Prize for Literature. How does that make you feel, Sadiq? <laughs> um, it makes me feel grateful um, for my work to be acknowledged and validated in this big way. Um, it's really an exciting time, um, you know, when you write, you do not think about this kind of gratification, at least for me, I, I do not. So um, for, for the book, book to exist out there in the world and, you know, like for people to acknowledge it, to be at least, you know, like one of the best books um, um, coming out of a, of a rich um, 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 literature um, in terms of Nigeria, it's like, um, really great <laughs> and I am just counting my blessings still um, and trying to enjoy the moment uh, and yeah that's generally the feeling right now. Your Creep My Kibla is an elegy written for your daughter and you've managed to translate to translate personal tragedy into something poetic I mean into, into poetry uh, tell me about that, about the, the writing and where you are right now with the book, especially what is written in it. Yeah, um, so I, I do not like to take credit for the book um, because um, when, when my child passed, um, I just resorted to poetry, you know, to find language, to speak about that grief, that loss. And it was like a, a personal um, endeavor for me, right? Um, I was living far away from, from Mina, where my family were at that particular time. And that's where she, she passed. And when the news came to me, um, I was in Zai, um, Kaduna. Um, I, I couldn't even make it to the funeral because, you know, like we're Muslims and we, we bury pretty quickly. Um, so I didn't have a lot um, in terms of what to work with at that particular time. Like I, I knew I wanted to see her dead, you know, like as if, you know, seeing her would bring her back to life or something, but it was, you know, at that particular moment, it was like a strong emotion that I was feeling. Um, but ultimately I couldn't. So I started writing immediately. I think the very minute that I heard of her passing, um, I started writing on my notebook and I continued, you know, that process throughout the journey back home. Um, and even when I arrived um, and to my greatest disappointment that she had been buried 30 minutes earlier, I rushed to the cemetery um, there. I, I couldn't do anything other than, you know, like I write in the notebook that I went with because it was also a thing of guilt. Um, like I felt like I couldn't talk because I wasn't there. Um, I was angry. And so the page was, you know, like a, a quiet space where I can be vulnerable with myself, where I can be present with all of my emotions. And ultimately I did that, you know, every single day I would write for 10 minutes, 20 minutes during lunch breaks at the office. I did that for seven months. And after seven months, I, you know, started reading some of the things out to friends and, you know, like somebody was like, oh, this is a great way to immortalize this child. I think this, you know, can go, can become something good. At first I resisted um, that urge because like making it into an art form, it already exists in that form, right? Um, but beginning to look at it as an artwork, I resisted for a while because the idea that when it's published, there's some sort of gratification that I would get from it. You know, I resisted that. I felt at that particular time that, you know, like I would be prof profiting off of my grief and I was averse to that. Um, but ultimately, you know, like I saw reason and got out of my own way. And, you know, like the book is now published. It's um, been shortlisted for the prestigious NLNG 
Prize for Nigerian Literature. Um, it's also on the short list of, um, of a prize here in America, the Derek Walcott um, Poetry Award and another award um, and you know like it's it's gotten attention and so I'm, I'm grateful for that because even though my child is not of this world right now um, it seems that you know her story is persistent out there in 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 the world and you know like even strangers who haven't met her uh, are reading about her story and and so i, I think in, in that sense i'm grateful um for that and you know um, but I, <laughs> I i i still struggle with the book like i find it difficult to read um because it seems like each time that i read it it's a validation sort of <laughs> for for death um it, it's like crystallizes that that reality that i am fighting against right I come to the realization always when I read the book, when I see the book, that my child is dead, right? Um, and this is the only physical manifestation of her presence in the world. It's the book that I have written. And I do not take that for granted, right? Because there are like a lot of people who ultimately, you know, do not have agency to to Im immortalize, you know, their loved ones that they've lost in this way. But again, I always say, you know, like it's a book that I rather didn't write, right? I, I would prefer to have my child's presence rather than the book. But again, I am grateful, you know, for, for the possibility of that, you know, like, um, um, so, yeah. I, I watched an interview of you and you were talking about how you got the title for the book, especially the Kibla part, that the word you had before was cathedral. But maybe at the point you, at the point of praying, Kibla just came and, mm -hmm. and if I must say, I think that word is actually inspiring. So mm -hmm. uh, would you like to say something about that too? Yeah, um, you know, like when you lose people, um, everything becomes like a, a ritual, um, you know, you, at least in my case, you know, I, I found myself sniffing her clothes, um, holding on to her shoes, holding on to a piece of her hair, um, gotten off um, her comb. And it's like the creep where she lay, often would be, you know, like where I would go and sometimes sniff the bed shit, um, touch the mattress. And when I wanted to title the book, it, it went through different iteration. Um, um, I think the first title was This Grief. And then This Grief Has No Name. And then Your Crib, My Cathedral. But, you know, like I, I wanted something that showed um, my faith as a Muslim. And I thought about, I love the word cathedral, but a, a supervisor of mine um, here in America was the first person who said, well, you know, like, I, I don't know, because like cathedral means a particular kind of faith. And I know that you're Muslim. So is it possible to get some kind of word? um that would serve that purpose and so immediately i thought about mosque and i'm like no <laughs> um, um and one day i you know like i was praying um because here in america like it's it's also very difficult like it's not like in nigeria that you know the direction of prayer all the time right because they like mosques all over the place um here you have to you know like use the kibla finder on your mobile phone um, and so when I wanted to pray, um, I think it might have been in another city in a hotel. I brought out my phone and I, you know, searched for the Tibla. Um, And when I did, and when I finished praying, I'm like, oh my goodness, that's the word that I was looking for. And the idea that, you know, like all of the places like where she has been, like is that's the position where I would offer prayer. I just thought it was really profound. If I wasn't proud of anything <laughs> in the book, 
that's one thing that you know like i know that yeah this 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 one is a good title i was really proud of myself when i got it because like it's encapsulate not just the feeling but it was you know a, a good representation of how i felt and what i was doing and how divine her presence now is in my own life um so yeah um that's just how i got the title um and you know like sometimes people like find it very difficult to even pronounce and not everybody gets what the title means but the moment when you know that you know like qibla is the direction where muslims pray all over the world and now that this child's resting place like when she was alive is the direction to which i offer my prayer um you know like it's just um make people aware of how brilliant the title is i am yeah i'm cocky about the title because i'm actually very proud of it i actually think it's very brilliant too yeah. okay so what has the reaction been like since you got shortlisted for the nla for the nigerian prize for literature um i mean it has been great reception like i'm very excited to see how you know a lot of um, readers back in nigeria like were receptive to to not just my book being on the short list but other short listers like romeo orio gon suede vashima agema you know the 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 youthfulness of 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 the short list you know like i i think it it represent you know like where nigerian poetry is going um because it, it it's a, a representation of such contemporary work and you know like sometimes like i've seen people you know make the argument that you know like all of the people on the short list are like young people but i'm like okay like um yeah that's a good thing um but you know some of these people are also have been writing you know like for I, at least i know swede has been doing it for more than a decade romeo might have been doing it for like 8 years or so um and i think i have been doing it for a little bit more than a decade too i'm i'm young but um like not so young anything that you've been doing more than a decade you know like you're not very young at it right because even even if it's work experience like that's a considerable work experience so i was just excited to to see how the reception has been in terms of you know like people embracing this as a um, breath of fresh air and and also just quite honestly i'm i'm just grateful um um that my child's memory is being recognized in this way because like each time that anybody reads her book and the book um uh, and read up about my experience with her and also her experience um as 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 someone who was you know living in the world it's like they manifest in her presence so like yeah it's 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 great um and i am i am just grateful you know for this time and i'm trying to enjoy the moment um but yeah so do you still have an idea what the literary scene is back at home what is it like in nigeria Yeah I um I pay attention to what's going on I'm you know like very aware of what's going on um I read a lot of you know the things coming out I I try to read some of the books um that have been published whether here in America or other places you know by Nigerians and also um writers in Nigeria um social media has been able to you know like help bridge the gap that exists between me and Nigeria so um yeah i i pay attention i i read a lot of the awesome writing coming out of nigeria right now i actually think it's a golden age for nigerian poetry there's just like a lot of you know people writing really exciting work and i think it it also showed up in the amount of books that were um entered for the nlng prize um if i'm not mistaken about 280 seven books were entered for the prize you know like which says that nigerian literature especially poetry is and it's it's in it's in a healthy um place right now so yeah i i still keep in touch you know by way of food here right like my kitchen is is very nigerian um you know cooking um nigerian food but i must you know concede that i i miss eating um amala um um that's my favorite nigerian dish not with ewe too but um with okra soup 
<laughs> okay, don't let us even go there. I mean, with uh, okra. Okay, but now talking about the talking about the number of entries for the Nigeria Prize for Literature, do you also think that that is also that could be down to the fact that uh, it comes with a cash prize? I mean, with a, with a prize of one hundred thousand dollars. No, yeah, one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, um, that's always a factor because, you know, like in Nigeria, like $100,000, that's serious money. Um, that's the money that, you know, like even um, somebody who is sad for a very long time cannot take away um, in terms of um, retirement benefit. So, of course, it's, an, it's, it's a thing. And, and, and sometimes, you know, like that's also a good thing because it serves as motivation for people to actually do this and compete um, with the hope that they would, um, you know, at least appear on a long list or short list or, you know, like even win the prize. So that's, that's, a, that's a factor. But, you know, like I am sure that, again, for a lot of writers, even some who, you know, entered for the prize, it is not why they write right because like I think the impulse for every creative writer um, especially poets is that the need to you know participate in in a larger conversation right um, to document you know um, the daily existence of not just the poet you know or the writer but you know the daily existence of their loved ones you know the daily existence of the society that they're part of so I think that's a, a bigger drive um the prize you know like it's a lot of money um and i think you know for some people that's like extra so after creating this work after um um building this body of work oh well there's you know prizes that i can apply to just to see if it's good work right because like sometimes this price is um offer you know validation um to the writers in terms of the work that they have done you know like because like it's about what other people perceive as you know quality work if your work is you know selected the perception is that it's you know a good work so i think that's also beneficial in terms of you know driving people to continue doing that work because there's like a a, a, a value system or a, an honor system where you know there's either a thumbs up to the work or you know not thumbs down, but just um, <laughs> ignoring the work, right? But yeah, I'm sure, you know, all those who entered for the prize are like really important work. And, you know, of course it doesn't always speaks to the quality of the work, right? Because even with the judging, it's just taste, right? There are just some things that, you know, like the judges um, are drawn to more, but yeah, they're, they're like a ton of, you know, good writing being done in Nigeria and I think you know like a lot of people should celebrate this time um, because of that um, because I think it's important for society to always you know document its stories and if more people are doing that it means there's just more perception and more history out there in the world um, that people need to contend with um, so you know overall it's um, a, a positive thing that the prize exists you know like it's for people on to to, to do the work that they already love to do.